Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today we'll be taking a look at several cases of plagiarism of the Legend of Zelda series, some of which are quite surprising. It's a pretty interesting subject, but before we jump into it, we'd quickly like to mention that we've begun streaming regularly over on twitch.tv slash didyouknowgaming. If you fancy hanging out, talking games, films, food, and everything in between, whilst also checking out a range of obscure and iconic video games, head on over and say hello. Now, back to the trivia. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness, or so says Oscar Wilde. This episode will be exploring games that clearly took too much inspiration from Zelda, or media that literally took material straight out of the series. While in some cases these may be inspired by Zelda, at some point inspiration and homage don't quite fit the description. It's easy to assume that because something is almost entirely plagiarized, it would be inferior or generally of poor quality, but this simply isn't the case with this first example we're looking at. Announced in 2019 and set to release sometime in 2020, Genshin Impact is an action RPG set in a vast cel-shaded world, utilizing elemental-based combat and gameplay. Players set off in the world, fighting with both close-quarters weapons like swords, while also being able to use a bow and arrow for long-range attacks. The player is able to climb environments with a depleting stamina meter and glide across long distances. They must also solve environmental puzzles, cook at fires and hunt small critters for meat, and enemies can be defeated through direct combat or by using elements such as fire. Now some would identify what we've just described as Breath of the Wild, though the description applies to both of these games. Genshin Impact, however, is not a Nintendo property, and is instead created by MiHoYo, a Chinese studio best known for the mobile game Honkai Impact 3rd. The company doesn't shy away from the clear similarities between their new title and Breath of the Wild, calling the Nintendo game an inspiration for their new release. Genshin Impact was shown at China Joy Gaming Expo by Sony, leading many in the audience to question exactly what they were seeing. The similarities between Breath of the Wild are immediately noticeable to anyone that has played the Nintendo Heavy Hitter. Fans at the event could be seen holding up their Nintendo Switch consoles or copies of Breath of the Wild, whilst flipping off the newly revealed game at Sony's booth. One fan was so upset that they even destroyed their PlayStation 4 console for all to see. And I don't know why. <laughs> One unsurprising addition to Genshin Impact, which has not been fully revealed and is not present in Breath of the Wild, is the inclusion of microtransactions. It's believed that these are used in order to unlock additional equipment and possibly additional characters in a gachapon-like system. With this in mind, Genshin Impact will be released free to play, though it is yet to be seen how much of an abuse of the customer's purchasing habits the title will take advantage of. This isn't the only Breath of the Wild inspired game to come to light since the Switch title's launch, and unsurprisingly, this next game comes from the mobile game market. The game, released in China, is called The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Adventure Journey. The game's listing showed images ripped directly from Breath of the Wild as well as from Hyrule Warriors. Despite the game's title including Zelda and the page's screenshots including Zelda gameplay and characters, the game itself actually looks nothing like Zelda. Proclaimed as a high-quality recreation of the PC version, it looks like Breath of the Wild Adventure Journey is actually just another random Chinese game released under a different name with fake screenshots. Somehow, this game managed to appear on both the iOS and Google Play stores, though as you might expect, it has since been removed. While this ill-fated title and Genshin Impact might not literally contain any material from the Zelda franchise, one game released on the Nintendo Switch eShop actually does. In July of 2020, Korean video game development and publishing studio HUP released what they describe as the original action RPG, Final Sword, on Nintendo's online store for $17.70. Now, you might not be too shocked to learn that this game is simply a Switch port of a mobile game and makes use of a wide array of generic game assets. However, there's more to the game than this, as the title also uses music that, while not ripped from a Zelda game, is clearly using Zelda's lullaby. How the game passed Nintendo's quality control is yet to be determined, but it likely comes as many games are being approved for sale each week, leading to less stringent quality assurance being held over third-party titles. 
It only took a few days for the big end to take notice, and the game was subsequently removed from the Japanese eShop before ultimately being removed from international stores as well. Now here's an interesting case of theft, though this time it isn't quite so clear cut. In Russia, a schoolgirl became a young author with her first book published in 2007, Agramont. Exmo, the book's publisher, began a large-scale campaign to promote the young author, claiming, The book is a real miracle. Nothing like this has ever been published in our country or abroad. Valeria Speranda was only 10 years old when she wrote this book. A lot of emphasis was made on the unique nature of the novel, which was compared to the likes of Lord of the Rings and Narnia, and the fact that the book contained special, magical people that you will not meet in any other book. After appearing on shelves and selling some 20,000 copies, skeptics began to speak out, claiming that the book may not actually be the work of a 10-year-old and that it was actually the work of an adult. This was quashed after Valeria turned up to a book club presentation and soon she had been interviewed by a large number of outlets. She claimed to have written the book for her mother as a birthday gift, and that she was guided by her mum to make a detailed work plan, think through the plot to the end, and break it into chapters. The response to the book was mixed, but one group of readers seemed rather unhappy. Gamers. The book is in fact a rather detailed retelling of the plot of Ocarina of Time. A small excerpt from the opening should provide enough evidence for anyone aware of Ocarina of Time's introduction. Alan was sleeping. The night was unusually dark without the moon and stars. For several days now, the boy's dream was filled with anxieties and nightmares. A little fairy, like a firefly, cut through the pre-dawn darkness with a bright stripe. She knew who was the chosen one. Navi flew to Alan's house. He was the chosen one. Many characters from the story, such as Navi, Ganondorf, the Gerudo, Talon and Malon retained their names, though some were changed, like Lord Jabu Jabu becoming Lord Wabu Wabu, or Lake Hylia becoming Lake Shelia. Link, of course, became Alan, while Zelda became Elder by simply removing the Z in Zelda. Many became aware that the credit for the book's imaginative world shouldn't be given to the young Russian schoolgirl, but the adult Japanese developer Shigeru Miyamoto. Nintendo never challenged the publication legally, and the book's publisher has refrained from comment, though they were likely unaware of Zelda and were genuinely impressed with the imagination behind the plagiarized story. When asked recently about her book, Valeria said she spent some time growing up in Germany where she got an N64 and Ocarina of Time for her birthday. She learned German whilst at school and could understand the relatively basic vocabulary of the game. Where the book diverts in story from Ocarina of Time is based on her inability as a child to face scarier moments, so she would make up stories around those segments. Much of her original writing was criticised by the publisher and rewrites were constant, with several changes being made from her original drafts. She spoke of being bullied for several months after the book's similarities to Zelda came to light, while the book's publisher was communicating with Nintendo of Japan. Apparently, the Japanese rights teams didn't take the case any further, and eventually concentration on the novel dissipated. Valeria Speranda gave up her career in writing for a culinary vocation and believes she'll never go back to writing for fears of people assuming any new story she makes will be plagiarized. While it is in Russian, we've linked to an extensive look at the book and the interview with Valeria. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we'll be talking about an obscure sim title that was released for the original PlayStation and PC, Theme Aquarium. The game was released in 1998 on the PlayStation exclusively in Japan as Theme Aquarium and was part of the Theme series of games by Bullfrog Productions alongside games such as Theme Park and Theme Hospital. However, when it was released in 2000 for the PC exclusively in Europe, it was simply titled Aquarium with the theme part of the name and any mentions of Bullfrog Productions being dropped. The reason for the PlayStation version featuring the theme brand was that the previous theme games had proved to be popular in Japan. So, publisher EA Square wanted to help generate further interest by asking Bullfrog Productions to use it in its marketing. However, when porting the game to the PC for the West, a decision was made to simply release the title as Aquarium. This was due to the belief that the game's quality wasn't high enough for it to come out in the West as a themed game, or use the highly coveted Bullfrog brand name. This information comes from developer Shintaro Kanaoya, who provided localization assistance in the title. Did you also know that there was a Mario racing game similar to Mario Kart and Excitebike that never came out in the West? 
or that there was an obscure physical version of Mario Party that used the Game Boy Advance e-reader? For more obscure Mario facts, check out our video on obscure Mario game facts. And don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks. Too many cooks.